YouTube. This is a catch and cook Chinook or King Salmon video. I'm fishing with the Wooded Beardsman. We're smoking a fish in this smokehouse, freshly built, actually just getting the final touches with Kevin the Woodchucker, uh, who is modern self-reliance on YouTube. Have a look in here. Well, this is unusual. I uh, just drove four hours south to go fishing. Um, Lake Ontario and I uh, just arrived uh, nice little quiet town just changed my pants and shirt in the parking lot nobody seems to mind and I'm gonna get set up I'm salmon fishing this is the first time I've salmon fished since I was a teenager picked up some brand new waders and boots um, I wish I would have done that ten years ago Every time I'm in smelt fishing and duck hunting, never had waders all this time, so this is new territory for me. I think uh, even just a couple years ago, if you would have asked me if I was going to be that guy with the uh, stocking foot waders and the shoe boots, I've been like, nah, that's not me, man. That's too hardcore. But uh, that's where I'm at today. Oh, look who's here! Did you do an intro yet? Yeah. <laughs> the wooded beards. You're, carrying, Scott. you're not carrying all this out, are you? So Scott didn't approve of my uni knot, so he's gonna tie my leader line for me. With a knot that I don't know. You might know, it's just a basic fisherman's line. Huh? If I can actually get it today. So I've got, uh, well there's Chris's rod, he's got a nice new one. This is one that was given to me, it's probably over 50 years old. Rocking an old reel. 50 pound braid, and then 6 pound leader. All right, so I've got uh, kind of a slip boat here on my main line, which is the braid, and then a swivel, six pound leader, um, and then a couple of sinkers, and I was pretty surprised about how small of a hook these guys are using. That's what I would use for creek fishing, for speckled trout, but they say it works, so we'll make it work. I had a uh, Canadian emergency on the way down here because I got up at 4.30. I actually came partway last night to make the drive a little bit shorter and to squeeze in a visit with a friend and also to pick up these waders. Uh, I got to a Tim Hortons and it wasn't open. That's a Canadian emergency, but it gets worse because the robot voice said, please join us at our 24-hour location just down the road. And I went there and uh, it was closed. Somebody was in there but they weren't answering the little drive through uh, microphone or anything, so that was bad. Then, it's even worse, I went 30 kilometers and then I missed the off-ramp to the service station, so I missed another Tim Hortons, and then I basically drove for two hours, no coffee. But I got one right before I got here, so it's all good. What have you got, Scott? That's like an inline reel, is that? It's a center pin. Center pin, okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice colors. Yeah, Okuma Sheffield. They're nice little reels. Are you a serious salmon fisherman? No. No? Okay. <laughs> are, are you a serious salmon fisherman? No. No? Okay. I'm 100% amateur. Yeah. I'm just going to use it in a spin cast reel. Yeah. But on a salmon rod. Yeah, a salmon like size. Like a 10 rod. foot. Yeah. 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 So cool. it's, it's a mix. Hybrid. Yeah. Use what you got. Yeah. Got the old waders from my dad. Nice. I don't even have old waiters kicking around anymore to use. So. Yeah, they're less fancy than yours. Yeah. Well. It's like we put ourselves together, we're all set. Actually, yeah. we bore that rod. Yeah. That, those waiters. Yeah. Or well, even these. And we're all set. These are good yeah. for the winter <laughs> those, fishing. Those are we'll do an too. Instagram shot. <laughs> well, I got these lightweight ones because I figured I can always wear wool inside them if I'm duck hunting or whatever. And then I don't want to die like in the insulated ones. I thought those would be hot today, which I'm Yeah, sure I'm wearing are. my underwear underneath. Oh, yeah. Okay. I took my jeans off and yeah, yeah. that's... Yeah. I stripped down in the parking lot here earlier to switch my pants and my shirt. I looked around, I was like, oh, this is a quiet little town. There's nobody in sight. 
pants off. Should, pants today on. you could have just wore the boots. Yeah. It's warm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll be sweating today. That's all right. It'll be 30, 30 Celsius. Yeah. I'm, I'm already sweating. That's what I expected. Because so. these are neoprene, so like oh, they, yeah. they're the thick neoprene for winter fishing and duck hunting and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So. so we'll match up your rod, my waders, and your new glasses. Yeah. Those aren't your regular glasses. No, these are polarized. Oh, okay. Now you got, a, you guys, got polarized ones on, right? Yeah. You gotta see they the fish. Yeah. yeah, it makes a big difference. Cool. All right, well, let's get in there. Let's go. Can't catch fish from here. Right. Sounds good. You see the cormorants? Oh, yeah. You can walk right up to them. Oh, yeah, they're pretty friendly here. Yeah. No. <laughs> this is a beautiful river. I've never been on this river, so this is the Ganaraska. And uh, Scott said it's Ontario's most productive salmon run with uh, over 10,000 fish coming through every year. Perfect. So we're just looking for shadows in this uh, pool water. They're thinking there's a salmon there. In the shallow stuff, like where Scott's standing, you could see a 30 pound fish there, no problem, but here they can be uh, less invisible in that foamy water. Yeah. A maybe fish. Oh, that dark spot at the end of your rod tip there. Yeah, yeah. Right in there. Okay. Going high tech here. Just uh, put the aqua view in. Have a little look upstream. Like, yep, that's a fish. Or nope, it's a boulder. How fishing has changed. Scott said it's uh, 71 Fahrenheit, so that's pretty warm water. Probably, you can probably could have just anyway. it's good to have some under grabbed some uh, water shoes and just jumped in with my pants. But I'm pretty happy that I picked up these waders because they're going to get a lot of use. We're fishing like otters, just cruising, cruising and checking all the pools and all the spots where you can see, just try and hone in on them. Still uh, pretty early in the run right now, so there are fewer fish than there might be at other times. But you guys have caught them here already this week. Uh, last week. Last week? Yeah. Yeah. Scott was here on Saturday, which was what? Three days ago. Yeah. He caught one, and we caught one this morning, but he didn't land it. Yeah. So there, it's early. Obviously, if it wasn't early, there'd be full of people. Yeah. And full of fish. Yeah, yeah. So that's the trade-off. More people, more fish. Less fish, less people. I like less people. There's a big one. Big one. Get right in there. You guys are gonna coach me on that. Get right in there. Drifted a thousand times right in front of it. That'll get you a guy. Get float up higher. Get right in there. Get right in there. Get right in
go. I'm gonna do that a hundred thousand times. Hopefully I get another chance. They're huge, huge fish. So, I don't know if you can see Scott behind me. He followed that fish downstream. He spotted where it stopped to rest between two rapids. He stangled up pretty good in a tree though. I saw me went to do a hook set and uh, he missed. And his line's in a tree, but I think that fish is still sitting there, so. Um, maybe I'll see if I can get a little shot of these guys hooking into that fish or maybe I'll scoot up on my own and see if I can spot another one. So they're pretty sure it's in this pool here and they're just gonna keep casting. Casting and casting and casting. Oh my goodness. Look at this. I thought it was a bicolored mole, but it's uh, which is not really a thing. It's a shrew, and some of its hair fell off, so it's just the skin and then the fur on the rest of it. It's kind of gross. Well, those guys are gonna hammer that pool, so I'm gonna walk past this mural, and I'm just gonna have a look upstream because I don't think all three of us can fish that spot, so I might as well do some spotting while they are doing some catching and i'll just keep looking over my shoulder if they hook into one we'll go back we'll see what's going on apparently there's a nice big one there eh? apparently uh you can be fighting them for a very long time scott said the last one he hooked uh he was half an hour fighting it so should give us lots of time to scurry down and uh, see what the action's all about. Found one. But uh, it's not in great shape. They're huge. It's longer than my arm. I've um, actually come quite a ways up river from where those guys are trying to catch that one that I spooked. And that's the first one that I've seen so far. I think I've done maybe half a kilometer. Oh, I see them behind me. They're coming up. I guess they gave up on that other one. So, nothing yet. One dead fish. We're into new territory for Scott. He's never been this far up, so the river splits and joins. So we're gonna take the small one up and then the big one back. Um, where Chris is there in the background, as those guys were catching up, I caught a little rainbow, like a, maybe a nine, nine inch rainbow. Now I, I was trying to hustle it over to the camera because I wasn't filming, but I dropped it. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll catch more. I didn't know there were rainbows in here, but it makes sense that there would be. Uh, rainbows that run, brown trout, Atlantics, coho, and kings. And what are we fishing for right now? Coho and kings. Coho and kings. Okay. I'm pretty sure they're the same fish, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we're fishing for right now. Um, you got a chance to catch some decent rainbows. Some of them come up in the fall and brown trout. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Yep. That's fun. What are we? We're under a walnut or a butternut. These look Not like. Clear. Maybe. They're, and it's starting to rain. Maybe they're butternuts. I Oh, that's how it's just it's off the tree, I think. I was hoping that was actual rain, Jack. You got something on your pants. <laughs> home is the home. Yeah. I gotta see if there's a fish under. Yeah. Check underneath.
There's some uh, rainbows biting here. A little tangle. Yeah. This is just upstream there. There's another pool where you can't see bottom, so he's giving that a cast. He uh, caught a nice rock there a minute ago. And we were going to give this one a try because it's pretty deep too. And it seems like, yeah, there's a bite, eh? We're hitting it. It's just a matter of getting one that's big enough. Yep. Take it all the way down. I think you're tangled up again. Well, maybe I'll fish this side of it and you fish that side of it and we'll see what we get. Scott's chasing one up the river here. I think it's on the move and he's trying to keep ahead of it. I think he had it hooked up a minute ago. Uh, but then when I looked up again, he didn't. So I'm not sure what's going on. We just chased one upstream that motored through the shallows and then he landed in this pool here. He's probably taking a rest, so we're going to try and fish him out of here. Well, I looked back up the river because I heard Scott shouting and he hooked into a nice one. Um, and he and Chris kind of walked it along up the river to tire it out before, uh, probably went about 300 meters, 300 yards. And then they were able to uh, grab it by the tail, get it up on shore, so... It's got hooked into one, and they're just walking it up river, waiting for their chance to scoop it out of the water. Now we've walked it all the way back down the river to where we're parked, and it's gonna get cleaned. Scott's already Got the row. He's a row man. Zoomed in? Yeah. Look at all that row. And that's only one half. There's two halves. that one fish in the cooler so we're done we're gonna head back to the cabin that's where you're gonna see us next but uh, we're just up at the fish ladder the dam and uh, have a little look to see how many fish have made it up so far this far I see one for sure Oh yeah, I see their tails sticking out a little bit. at the back end. Yeah. I don't think they're going to show up on camera, but there's a bunch of them here. You might see a tail come out of the water. I was saying that it's just packed with them, right? Yeah. And you would see them coming like jumping to get up that fish ladder. Oh yeah. yeah. Non-stop. Just non-stop, yeah. That's cool. Well so the ones that are super dark, they've been in here for a while. Yeah. Uh, they start to lose the silver and their skin and oh. stuff as the longer they're up river. It's their system actually starting to de decay and start to rot. Yeah. So these are all the early birds. Yeah. They might not really pay to be an early bird when you're a salmon. <laughs> well, if they came up with a mate, they'd be fine, but... Yeah. They are catching the Chinooks. Yeah. When did the coho run? Uh, same time. Okay. Well, there's nothing quite like finishing a hot day fishing and crashing in a little cabin in the cool breeze in the woods which is what we did last night. Um, long drive back. And uh, this is where we ended up. Which you've seen this place before, but uh, you've maybe seen more of it than I have recently. 
because Kevin the Woodchucker, um, who uh, now has his own channel on YouTube, Modern Self Reliance, he's been as busy as a little beaver uh, doing all kinds of projects here that are new to me, uh, including a pond off the porch. So that's pretty cool. Um, it was kind of dark when we got in, so I'm having a better, a better explore in the daylight. There's an outhouse here now. How awesome is that? The uh, meat pole that I put up in uh, one of our fall wilderness living challenges or uh, wild food eating weekends. Still hanging there, just no meat on it right now. But if there was, I would want to cook it in this oven. This is super cute. And you get to see this in action later because we're going to cook some uh, corn. Uh, some corn. What are they called? Corn. The flat fajitas, maybe? Anyway, we're going to cook them there. There's a water tank here now. Collects rainwater from this homemade gutter system. That's cool. So it's just like a cut along the top here. And I think our plan is to use this smoker. Um, this is Kevin's latest project, which he will have posted on um, his channel, Modern Self Reliance. I'm sure before I get my video edited and posted on mine, so this isn't uh, isn't a spoiler, but it's got a really serious rock base. He thought there might be a metric ton of rocks there. Um, this side is firewood storage, and what he did is he left left an airspace and put in some rock wool. So when the fire is burning down here, then presumably it's also, you know, in addition to producing smoke for the smoke chamber on the left side, it's going to be producing some dry heat in here and help to keep your firewood really nice and dry. So this is built standard width for oven racks. Um, so he's going to put in a couple of little boards for shelves and then oven racks will just slide right in. And then there's just a little crack in the roof there for uh, smoke to go out. This is very cool. There's the pipe and the smoke chamber. But down here, overlooking the pond, check this out. Hobbit house. Uh, who doesn't want a hobbit house on their property? And if you go over to Kevin's channel, it'll show you how to make one. Round door on it. Look at that. Huh? Super cute. I need one of these. So I hung my uh, my new waders up. I want to make sure I take care of them. So I hung them up to dry, put my boots up to dry. But then I realized um, these guys are really into the Hobbit thing. This is a gigantic stack of Hobbit tree stands. Look at this. Well, I'm up there. There, I'm on a Hobbit tree stand. I don't know if they're planning on selling these through their web store or what's going on. I'm gonna do a uh, paperless fire. So our, oh, I don't wanna drop all my three sizes of kindling here. First layer is really fine balsam branches. Second layer, chunkier balsam branches. So I'm just gonna Punch these guys up, hold them in half, set them in there. My bigger balsam branches, I put those on top. And then I'm going to break up a bunch of this dry cedar. And 
and whoop, that can go on top of those guys. <coughs> my little mini lighter so if your balsam's dry enough and there's enough of those little fine branches they should all light each other as the flame ladders up and I'll get to your bigger kindling hopefully it's got enough heat to burn that as well we'll get some more on deck here and then we can just throw firewood in so the way these stoves work oh this one has a chimney uh, I've worked with one before that had no chimney, so the air drafts in and then back out. And it holds more heat that way, I think. Alright. It would be good to weight down all that kindling so it catches. Master Carpenter at work. <laughs> Just putting the finishing touches on. Hacking up my handiwork. Yeah? Is this thing structural? <laughs> We're about to find out. This fire is getting pretty hot. Should be some good coals in there shortly. The smoked salmon is going to be the test burn on the smoker. And it looks like I maybe built too hot of a fire in there. The flames are licking up the outside. Just gonna get this door back in place, but I think it's too hot to touch. Uh, and have a look. It's pretty, pretty smoky in there, but it'll be smokier once we get some black cherry smoking in there. How's it looking? So we threw that black cherry in there. Oh no! <laughs> it's not going very well. We might have to restart that, eh? Well. Or if we leave the door off for a few minutes, maybe it'll start to... Well, we can just kind of... We can just smolder up a bit. Right size, right, right enough sticks in there. Yeah. Smoky in here though. It is smoky in there. Just make some smaller cherry chips here for the smoker. So these came off of a fallen big fallen branch on site here. We've got all the uh, wet cherry and some dry apple wood kind of split up and thrown in there, closed it off and it is smoking beautifully. So let's go have a peek. Chris is going to put that salmon together and then it's going in the smoker. With double spice, half of a salmon, this is going to be good.
I'm making a birdhouse. That's the weirdest thing I've seen in the forest ever. <laughs> Floating camera? Yeah. <laughs> I'm making a birdhouse on my, on my not so square roof. I'm gonna adjust the roof. You gonna adjust the roof or adjust the birdhouse? Um, a little bit of both. Yeah. Nice. It's all about, you know, adjusting stuff. Yeah. It's getting warmer in here. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's like, that's a hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, there's some heat in there. Nice. It's quite a bit warmer. Yeah, you heard his voice earlier, but he's here. The man, the, I am the here. legend, the Chinook Salmon Whisperer. I wouldn't say whisperer. <laughs> I just, decent at catching fish. I'm not good, but. He's being decent. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to all that good. This might just be the hardest one. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Having a little trouble. Yeah. I might have started with the hardest one. Set it aside. Yeah, we'll split the ants out. Look at them all. Yeah. Just in that little piece. There. No, there won't be all ants crawling in the smoker. Split them out of this piece too. Piece for the smoker. Piece for the ants. That's the smoker. There's all the eggs. Ant eggs in there, ants all through here. Kevin cursing in the background. Good. Looking good. Why didn't you cut it up? <laughs> oh no, there's a hole. It's pretty full. Now we're gonna do a little side adventure while the meat's cooking. We're gonna be like kids crossing the log bridge. We're gonna go and check camera traps. And hopefully pick some mushrooms. There's a, a likelihood of giant puffballs. So that would be cool. And it's also just really nice out. I'm usually just here in the fall hunting season. Uh, the winter, oh yeah, we did a spring hunt. No, we didn't. Anyway, that's what we're up to. Deer track there. And what do we got here? A little, little coyote track, I guess. The toes are really, this is tricky with my uh, shadow, but the toes are really deep in there. Oh, it's a jungle back here. All this uh, Joe Pie weed. That's this guy here. Bunch of uh, goldenrod. The jewel weed here, which is reputed to be the antidote for poison ivy, but also has a edible flower. They're not very substantial, and um, you always have to check inside them for bugs, but they're kind of tasty. This is the, uh, I think this is what people call canary reed grass, maybe. Maybe it's something different. That's where we were crow hunting last fall. 
like one. It is a nightshade. It, it's a nightshade. It's a nightshade growing all in with this uh, red bark, red twig dogwood. That'll kill you. Nightshade. Well, no. It might make you sick. <laughs> that's the one. That's one of the ones you're, you're not supposed to eat. Well, oh, yeah, you're not supposed to eat it. Right. Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised they recognize that. That's but the, there are two kinds of nightshade, right? So yeah. Sam Thayer kind of covers that pretty extensively in his book. Uh, the difference between the black and the red. So it's something to look up, learn about. Yeah. Nice patch of stinging nettle here. I don't know if those guys really looked at that before they walked through it. Did you guys see that you walked through a bunch of stinging nettle? Huh? Did you see that you walked through a bunch of stinging nettle? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just knocked one off in the bottom. Yeah, there's some babies. So right beside this turkey dust bath, this is a hemlock stump. And this is your varnish varnish shelf, the Ganoderma mushroom that people uh, hunt for medicinal purposes. There's a couple of baby stubs coming up here, which will grow grow up into uh, into a shelf like this. And this one's in nice condition. It's got a nice white spore bottom there, so it's kind of at a picking stage. Although I usually see them with a much redder. Um, top than this. This is very orange. There's red way at the back. Of, on the oh yeah, it's a little redder at the stem. Type. There are lots of turkey feathers lying around on the ground here. And also a lot of corn cobs. Probably the cornfield's about 150, 200 meters away. I guess the squirrels and the raccoons have been bringing a lot of corn cobs into the bush for snacking. That other one's too far gone. Yeah, I can oh. see yellow from here. Not when it has a hole in it like that. No. It's got like a growth on the side here with little insects. Look at all that fuzziness. Catch it in the sun maybe. There's a pretty solid one over here. <laughs> Seems that's what you found? It's pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, you gonna make some rock soup out of it? Rock soup? Yeah. Buff ball soup? No, rock soup. Oh. It's very so nutritious. That's not what we're looking for? No, we're not looking for rocks. Oh. I think, uh, I think we're too late. I think these are all spots where turkeys have been dust bathing. So, if I run back to the start of this little sandy strip, dust bath, two dust bath, three dust bath, four dust bath, five dust bath, Six dust bath. A turkey poop, or is that a goose? There's a little souvenir. Turkey wing feather. It looks like a raccoon home. The size of those cavities. Yeah, that could be like a raccoon hotel. Another That's big turkey feather there. Sometimes those giant puffballs just really jump out like you think there's a white grocery bag sitting in the bush. That's how I found my first one. That was deer hunting. There's another turkey feather. And I thought there was a white grocery bag in the bush, so I went over to clean it up because I always pick up garbage in the bush. And uh, lo and behold, it was my first giant puffball. This is the biggest ash tree that I have ever seen. And I'm sure we just walked past the biggest maple we've, I've ever seen. Look how big this tree is. It's huge. They don't grow like this up north where I am, which is a couple hundred kilometers north of here. They're much smaller. Like Almost got enough here for a whole so, turkey. So That's a real light colored one compared to those. Put it on, uh, now that one's beauty. perfect for tying flies. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Another hobby though. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. This is the ground hemlock. It's toxic but people make uh, anti-cancer drugs out of it. So the, you know the, the kind of, okay the short history of this is that they used to cut down Pacific yew trees to make the drug but it's not very efficient but then they found out that you could also use this stuff. Took the pressure off the Pacific yews. There's the berry. Um, 
but there are more here. I've just never maybe seen them in the right season to see so many berries on them. Which aren't even really berries because it's a conifer. I guess they're technically a cone. Coyote track down there. This is where we debated about how to get back. And this is the swampy path that I said, let's do it. Can't be that bad. It hasn't rained in 14 days. And it's not so bad. When I was here deer hunting, I walked through here with my muck boots on because a lot of these were actually standing water. These little mud holes. That's well, not so bad right now. And it's almost time to eat, I think. Getting hungry. We'll see if we can talk Kevin into building a floating boardwalk through all that swampy stuff. I think he'll do it. So in the end, there were no ripe puffballs to bring back. So, just coming back with a bunch of feathers. Not to eat. feather? <laughs> Let's have lunch. It's, it's wet all the way through. How much water? Mixing the fajita mix or the tortilla mix? Yep, the mass of flour. Yep. With some water. Nice. Flour there. Extra for the paddle. Red onion, tomato, salsa, adobo. What's in here? I have no idea. Me neither. It looks like lettuce. Oh, yeah, that would yeah, make sense. Lettuce. Na na. Oh yeah, it's a cold smoke, <laughs> it's not hot in there. Where'd the fish at? Fish, over at the, what are we calling this, the outdoor kitchen? Oh, finish it up in there. I see somebody took a corner off. I see, see somebody's chewing over here. Uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I bet it is. You can taste the smoke right through it already. Oh yeah, yeah. nice. There you go. Put onion right in it. You could. It smells like Play-Doh. Oh, that's Play -Doh. what I thought you were doing. No. I'm just it smells like Play-Doh? That's appetizing. Uh, it actually feels like Play-Doh too. Yeah. Maybe this is an elaborate hoax. What's that? This uh, tortilla business and it's all just like Play-Doh. <laughs> you can eat Play-Doh. Who didn't eat Play-Doh in there, were a kid? Me. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I wasn't going to eat that. <laughs> that stuff was delicious and salty. How big are you making these? Uh... As flat and as big as you can. That's You're crazy. supposed to use a press. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't oppress anybody out here. No? You don't want to oppress anybody? That was a really bad <laughs> So you don't want to impress joke. anybody? <laughs> too, too funny? <laughs> You're... Or not funny enough. <laughs> you need to uh, just go grab a log and roll it. Yeah. You don't like my dad jokes? <laughs> so ideally we'd have like something to press it out in. I found a piece of slate. There's all kinds of stuff hanging around here at the small cabin. Maybe I can just press out tortillas here. Where's that extra mass of flour? Would you guys use it all up? Nope. This feels a little more authentic. Boom. Okay. I feel like we're kind of in production now. You need battery in this thing? Yep. Oh, I broke the slate. It's got a big crack, but don't tell Kevin. Got the mass of corn, corn flour. This is exactly what they use it for. We're finally using it for what they use it for. That's got the frying pan, the nonstick, which uh, Jeremy yeah, broke broken here. half. Wait, working on this. So I'm just holding it by hand. Put some, uh, put They're some filming behind me, so juice. nobody's paying attention here. So, so if you want to see some more of this video, Chris has other footage, Kevin has other footage, and Scott might be putting something up on Facebook. Too much playing around with it. I have a hole where all my stuff in Okay. There we go. That's maybe as good as that's going to get. Yeah, 
with uh, small bit of fish. So if you ever wonder why we always eat so late, these guys, look at they're still playing with the salmon. It's supposed to be in the barbecue getting cooked. They're doing thumbnails. Over and over and over. It's in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't want to eat the salmon, man! What do you think, Scott? You want to eat that salmon? Well, I really want to eat that salmon. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting hungry. Oh, oh, look, it's going back to the barbecue again. <laughs> Just throw a bunch in at once? I would. Yeah, we move mine out of the way. Okay. You gonna go grab that tomato? I don't grab tomato. Grab some Cooking? It's gonna be, uh, like, yeah, throw, throw it as far back as you can. Oh, I got like hot smoke in my eyeball. That one's good. Is it ready? No. Oh. Is it supposed to be soft? No. Give him a flip. Do you want yours to Sure, please. Oh, the tortilla crumble. Eat that. Hurts. Everybody's getting their eyeballs smoked out by the stove. The brick oven. Mmm. Yeah, you're gonna do the slate plate too? Yeah. Did you start with a clean slate? The one that you had up there. Yeah. You wiped, <laughs> you wiped it off a bit? Yeah. All right. That is one of those. You didn't get it. <laughs> I was trying not to go with bad jokes. <laughs> trying not to encourage the continuation of bad jokes? Uh huh. They're not bad, they're just. Dad jokes. They're just dad. <laughs> they're not bad, they're just dad. That looks good. Yeah. You're not gonna. No, it. I think it's pretty much all cooked. It's all cooked enough anyway. Oh, you're getting all the little crusty bits. Well, you. I'm trying Hi, to. Hi, Grater. Avoid. Your brother loves the Wadobo. I'm trying to avoid. Just getting all the Wadobo pieces. The yeah, you can't do that. That's against the rules. It's it's oh, so if it folds it in half it would be. <laughs> I don't think it'll fold. You gotta make it a little crunchier. There. There. There you go. Just a corn Perfect. soft tuckle. That's it. I think it's perfect. Why do you need to add more stuff to it? <laughs> Keep it simple, right? Make it taste gooder. Gooder? Oh, gooder? Take a bite. I'll eat the piece with the ash. Yeah. That's how they make the masa. They use ash. Not anymore, but. Did you did you eat yours? <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 oh. Okay, I thought you broke it. I did. <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I think I'm the most patient of the bunch. Apparently I've done enough bonus living survival challenges. I don't know if I want to fold this or not. You're just gonna break it. It's those gluten-free people. Yeah. That's what the problem is here. Yeah. We need some wheat. We need some gluten. We need some yeah. soft gluten stuff. Gonna... That was a good experiment. Cool. Pretty tasty. Ouch. Well, hope you guys enjoyed. Salmon from the stream to the table. Uh, homemade tortillas. I think I preferred the salmon just on its own with the wadobo spice and the smoke. It was really good like that. Um, you should definitely check out modern self-reliance uh kevin's got all kinds of videos now of different builds that he's been doing around the property and the wooded beardsman has his video up probably for this at same adventure way before i'll get mine edited and posted and uh, i think scott even has posted a video to his fledgling youtube channel uh, so you could find him as well scott powers canadian the canadian outdoorsman i forget but i'll link it below to make up for my memory and I will see you guys on the next adventure.